tremendous influence of the black inventors upon, uh, uh, upon the American industry and the American culture um, and the type of uh, force and upward mobility that the black inventors uh, gave this clip here. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. It is an accepted fact that we are influenced, guided, and motivated by our communications. For so many scholars deleted the magnificent accomplishments of the in, of an entire race, and the Europeans did this collectively is the fact that they bared false witness against the original man. Right. Now, let's go to the automatic rail car coupler. Uh, Andrew J. Beard so is his name. That goes without saying, when they use the word Negro, it goes with their anthropology, their sociology, uh, their Darwinism, the uh, creationists against the um, evolution. All of that go together. They all down together with the same bullshit to discredit the black man in the wilderness of North America and the world. What I want to look at now is um, the first patent known to have been granted to a black man was for a, a corn planting machine. Um, the Confederacy, when it was the North against the South, the Confederacy found it necessary to include in sections of the Constitution for the Confederacy, stating that because, and I say because, because the black man and the woman in, were inventing things, so many things they have invented that the European has failed to give them recognition in because they would steal their patents. You can get that information from here. They, could, they would steal all of their patents, right, and make it look like they didn't do anything. And to, to do it legally, they put in the Constitution, and it stated, I quote, The owner of a slave also controls his inventions. You see the ingenious way of them stealing your credit and making it look like you're nobody? And then uh, they want to complain about why are you in the position you're in now. Well, the reason we're in the position we're in now is you killed all our Seven leaders. out of eight slaves worked on uh, southern plantations from early sunrise to late sunset. We all know that. And they were considered uh, property or, or chattel. That's, that's the term they used back then. They, they, they had them as chattel. And this is why I say we weren't quote unquote... Um, Yes, slaves. I consider us prisoners of war, uh, missing in action, things of that nature I add to the cipher because uh, it just doesn't seem right to just say they were slaves because they were more than just slaves. As you can see right here, they had them as property. Now, even though the people who worked as house servants were treated somewhat better than the field slaves, they wasn't treated that much more better because they could get traded off also. But now, when you were a black man in those days and you were a sailor, cause they had sailors back then. See, they don't even tell you that we were sailing the seven seas. Um, a lot of them was called Moors back then. And... Um, they felt that, you know, they got quotes in here saying that a lot of the sailors felt that their freedom, uh, they had more freedom being a sailor, being out on the seven seas than being in the United States or any of the other European colonized uh, countries. And, um, but this was the key. If they came to, say, New York or somewhere, they let them walk around, no problem. But if they were in, in any of the southern ports, and you were a free uh, seaman, and they called them free black amours, seamen, uh, or pirates. And um, they uh, would, now get a load of this now, you gotta, you gotta hear this. They would confine them to jail until their ships were ready to sail. They couldn't walk, because they said, no, we don't want you influencing uh, our niggers down here. You know, making them want to be free. Now, Henry E. Baker, 
assistant examiner in the United States Patent Office was able to publish four giant volumes on black inventors. Four giant you volumes. You to do your own research. Um, get these books, share them with your children, let them understand that the European been telling lies on them for a long time. Now, um, to understand how so many blacks supposedly one step from savagery could produce so much so soon and such a sophisticated nature, we turn to another authority, Dr. Robert Rothberg of Harvard, classifies much of the mystery in his authoritative uh, book that he wrote, Political History on Tropical Africa. And he says, uh, Professor Rothberg makes it very plain that we may no longer assume that the 15th century European found an African living in barbarism and slavery. Much of the factual material was omitted from American texts to protect the conscience of those who had built their economic uh, empires upon the traffic of slavery. Until now there has been a wall of silence concerning the African civil service, postal systems, Iron workers, armories, shipbuilders, universities, astronomers, and mathematicians, mathematicians, etc., etc., etc. With that, I'm going to say peace. Yeah, get it how you live or either live how you get